Hi, this is Amy at the Altice store. We often get calls from people who've had systems that are doing solar water heating for their house that they had installed back in the 80s, maybe even the 70s. And after decades of, of perfect performance, it stopped working. Either the pump is on when it should be off or it's off when it should be on. So generally, there's two pieces of equipment that could be the problem. If you've already tested that your pump is in fact functioning, just plug it into the wall to make sure that it does in fact turn on, uh, then what the problem probably is, is either your controller or the sensors that give the information to the controller. So I have a couple of old time uh, controllers here. This is a differential temperature controller uh, from Novan. This was a big company in the 80s. And um, I've got an even, even older one here from Solar Energy Products. I think this one's probably from the late 70s. So if you have a controller that your pump is connected to and you see a couple of wires going in and out of it, then that's probably your differential temperature controller. What you want to do is unplug the thin wires that are going into it and determine which wires are going to your tank and which wires are going to your collector. Now you might have a couple more sensors as well, but those are the two main ones that we're concerned with. Now the, those sensors, they actually um, put out a resistance based on the temperature that it's measuring. So at, in the daytime, the collectors will be sending a, uh, a resistance that indicates that the collectors are hot enough, and the tank will send a resistance that will show that it's colder than the collectors, and the differential temperature controller will say, great, the collectors are hot, the tank is cold, I'm going to turn on the pump. Likewise, at night, when the collector cools off, it's going to turn off the pump so that the collectors are not cooling the, the tank at night. So what often happens after maybe 30 years is that the sensor that is up on the roof for 30 years, that can fail. So there's a real simple way to test for that. What you want to do is get a multimeter that can read resistance or ohms. And when you disconnect the sensors from the controller, you're going to measure the resistance and then compare it to a chart that says what temperature is what resistance. So I'm going to use this big uh, ohm meter here just so that you can see the results as well. I've got three different sensors. One is in some, some ice water, one's in hot water, and one is just sitting here at room temperature. So we'll take the room temperature one first. And I'm just going to measure across the two wires. There's no polarity in resistance, so either plus or minus, the red or black, doesn't matter. And we see that we've got 12.4 K ohms. So that means 12,000 ohms. Up, oh, it's dropped down to just under 12,000 ohms. So now we're going to take a look at the cold one. So the cold one is measuring 30,000 ohms. Well, it's dropping down, so let's say 28,000 ohms. And I, if I look at my thermometer, it's in upper 30s of degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to look at my hot one. We're up around, say, 112 degrees, judging by the thermometer. And my sensor says that it's 4.9, or say 5,000 ohms. So I'll take my chart that I uh, have a, a copy of for you. And 5,000 ohms says that it is 106 degrees. So that sensor seems to be working correctly. Now the one that was right around room temperature at around 12,000 ohms, well, let's see, 12,000 ohms, 70 degrees. Yep, yep, that's about right. And then my cold one, that was up at um, around 28,000 ohms. So at 28,000 ohms, I'm at 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm seeing here is that my senses are all working correctly. So that means if the right information is getting to the controller, it's time to get a new differential temperature controller. 
So there's lots of different ones available. You can check them out on our website. Lots of different options. Many of them have displays on them now that show the temperature that the sensor is sending, which makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot the system when you can actually just read the meter rather than have to go through this. But I hope that this helps you decide whether you just need to replace your sensors or if the controller is bad as well. So uh, I'm Amy at the Altice store, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much.